वेलकम फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू फिजिक्स हब टुडे इज 24th ऑफ मार्च 2019 एंड इट्स द टाइम टू फॉर अ न्यू सेट वीडियो सो दिस इज सेट 26 एंड दिस सेट कंटेंट्स क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सेक्शन नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू टू दोस हु आर न्यू इन आवर चैनल दैट इन एवरी संडे वी पब्लिश अ सेट वीडियो व्हिच कंटेंट्स 10 क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स ऑफ फिजिक्स एंड दिस विल help you to improve your physics and make your base strong so without wasting wasting much time let's start today's said video so the first question reads like this the iv characteristics of the diode in the circuit below is given by this so you can see the circuit 10 volt battery is connected with 1 kilo ohm resistance in series and a diode is there Now V is measured in volts and I is measured in amperes. The current I in the circuit. Now look, this question is basically very easy if you know Kirchhoff's voltage law. So that's what we are going to use here. So we will be using Kirchhoff's voltage law. So uh, we are taking this right hand rotation, It's clockwise rotation, not right hand, clockwise rotation. you can take anti clockwise as well but uh, throughout the process you have to keep a single thing so applying kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop so 10 to the, uh, 10 volt is here so basically you need to know the sign convention while applying kirchhoff's voltage law now when you go from negative to positive terminal the corresponding voltage drop will be positive now i am telling you one thing to remember this when you encounter a battery or something then remember you are going from negative to positive so the corresponding voltage drop will be positive now when you will go from positive to negative then the voltage drop will be negative the latter one will decide here we are going negative to positive so it's positive otherwise if we were going from positive to negative then the corresponding voltage drop would have been negative so plus 10 volt now when you are going in the direction of current the corresponding voltage drop will be taken negative and the opposite is true when you go in the opposite direction so you are going look this you are going in this direction so you are going in the direction of current so minus sign is there and for this it's positive it's negative so you are going from positive to negative so A negative sign is there it's clear so voltage drop sum of voltage drops around this loop should be equals to 0 and we just replacing the value of i from here because when v is greater than 0.07 we can we have to use i equals to this and from this equation uh, we get the value of v to be 11.4 by 3 means 3.8 and it is greater than 0.7 therefore the current will be decided by this v minus 0.7 by 500 and it will produce i equal to 6.2 milliampere and it is matching with option 3 so option 3 is the correct option moving on to question number 2 a junction is made between a metal of, metal of arc function wm and a doped semiconductor of arc function ws with wm is greater than ws so basically it will produce some ohmic contact if the electric field at the interface has to be increased by a factor of 3 then the dopant concentration in the semiconductor would have to be now to solve this question we need to know the expression of electric field at the interface and we know that the expression of electric field e equals to root of r twice e nd vbi by epsilon s now what are these quantities E is electronic charge you know it very well nd is the dopant concentration vbi is the built in potential and epsilon is the permittivity of the semiconducting medium now we just need to know about nd because we have to deal with nd only so electric field e is proportional to root over of nd therefore e1 by e2 is root over nd1 by nd2 so we have to find out the dopant concentration in the latter case so we have to basically find out nd2 means e2 by e1 whole square into nd1 now everything is given it has been electric field has been increased by a factor of 3 so e2 by e1 is equal to 3 so 3 square times the initial dopant concentration means 9 times the initial dopant concentration 
so the dopant concentration is increased by a factor of 9 and it is matching with option 1 so option 1 is the correct option question number 3 consider the amplifier circuit comprising of two op amps a1 and a2 as shown in the figure if the input ac signal source has an impedance of 50 kilo ohm which of the following statements is true now we'll um, judge the uh, options one by one so as you f as you can see from my option that option one should be correct so we are coming uh, into that later on first look at the option which are not fitting into this e1 is required in the circuit because the source impedance is much less than r so it doesn't make any sense e1 can be eliminated from the circuit without affecting the overall gain this is also not correct e1 is required in the circuit if the output has to follow the phase of the input signal this is also not correct because look if a1 is not there a1 is not affecting the phase because if you give some input signal here it will you will get some output which is in opposite in direction means this is uh, inverting op amp so a negative sign will appear but here it is positive so it is not basically it is not in changing the uh, sign of the input signal now a1 is required in the circuit because the source impedance is much greater than r yes that's true because uh, for the output of for this op amp look this is inverting op amp and the output is given by minus r2 by r1 minus r2 by r1 r1 is the feedback resistance r1 r2 is the feedback resistance and r1 is this resistance okay so 1 mega ohm by 10 kilo ohm now if we do not add this then what will happen if source is directly applied to a to the gain will decrease by large amount because rn will be greater now because this and this will be in series and if the denominator increase then the gain will decrease that's why a1 should be there because the open output as you know that open output will give you lower impedance output impedance is very low for an open and that's why you will get a good gain otherwise the gain will reduce so option one is the correct option moving to question number four a large MOS transistor consists of n individual transistors connected in parallel. If the only form of noise in each transistor is 1 by F noise, then the equivalent voltage noise spectral density for the MOS transistor is. So you can visualize the situation like this. So this is the MOS transistor which is consisting of the parallel combination of n individual transistors. Okay, so if you have function f of x, then if you take the Fourier transform, you get f of k. Therefore, n transistors having each Fourier transform f of k will have combined Fourier transform n into f of k. f of k is for one transistor, therefore for n transistor it would be n into f of k. Therefore, if for one transistor spectral density is f of k, then for n transistors will be it will be n times f of k for 1 by f noise the equivalent voltage noise spectral density becomes 1 by n times f of k so this is for one transistor therefore for n transistor it will be 1 by n times that of the single transistors and it is matching with option 1 so option 1 is the correct option option question number 5 consider a low pass and a high pass filter with cutoff frequencies f lp and f hp respectively connected in series or in parallel configurations as shown in the figure a and b below okay so which of the following statements is correct now this is the case so if f of hp less than f of lp if this frequency is less than this higher uh, low fast frequency then what will happen Hi what is high pass filter high pass filter means this filter will pass uh, the uh, input after a certain value okay so after uh, this till this it will cu it will uh, <coughs> cut off the signal but after this it will allow and for low pass filter what it does it passes the uh, input signal up to some frequency then if the frequency of the input signal uh, goes beyond that then it will cut so uh, till this this low pass filter is allowing the input signal to pass through and beyond that it is uh, prohibiting 
or blocking. So basically you can see that a particular band of frequencies are allowed to pass through this combination of filters. So it's basically a band pass filter because it is allowing a band of frequencies to pass through them. And uh, for parallel parallel combination of high pass and low pass filter, if f of hp is less than f uh, f lp, then parallel means adding. So there is no basically there is no filtering. It will uh, filter this portion, this portion, and the beyond that. So um, basically both frequencies will pass either the high pass frequencies and low pass frequencies. So it is matching with option C. If if HP less than FLP then A act as a band pass filter this act as a band pass filter and B passes uh, the signal without filtering so whatever you give it will it will pass through it next question number six in a measurement of the viscous drag force experienced by a spherical particles in a liquid the force is found to be proportional to V to the one third where B is measured volume of each particle if b is measured to be 30 millimeter cube with an uncertainty of 2.7 millimeter cube the resultant relative relative percentage uncertainty in the measured force is so viscous drag force f is proportional to v to the power one third therefore f equals to k into v to the power one by three where k is a constant now take logarithm on both sides so that we get it it becomes very easy to differentiate so ln f equal to ln k plus one third ln b in this way we take the derivative okay so it's basically very easy therefore percentage error in force is df by f into 100 means uh, dv is given 2.7 millimeter cube and b is given 30 millimeter cube so we just put the values here and get three and it is matching with option four so option four is the correct option moving on question number seven the power density of sunlight incident on a solar cell is 100 milliwatt per centimeter square its short circuit current density is 30 milliampere per centimeter square and the open circuit voltage is 0.7 volt if the field factor of the solar cell decreases from 0.8 to 0.5 then the percentage efficiency will decrease from to solve this question you need to understand you need to know the expression of gain for a solar cell now what are the informations given input power is given short circuit current is given open circuit voltage is given now the efficiency the expression of efficiency is eta equals to maximum power drawn by input power so p max by p in. and here uh, in this expression of p max v not uh, v i c i i i v o c i o c so this is the um, basic gain and p max means there must be a factor of field factor this is called field factor and depending upon it eta is eta is varied so firstly the field factor was 0.8 so we'll put the value of f to be 0.8 and c eta 1 equal to 0.168 so percentage efficiency becomes so we have to uh, multiply it with 100 percent means 16.8 percent so in the first case when the field factor was 0.8 the percentage efficiency we are getting to be 16.8 percentage now when the fill factor becomes 0.5 then what will be the gain so we are just replacing the fill factor here it was 0.8 and now we are replacing f by 0.5 and we are getting 0 0.105 means percentage efficiency becomes 10.5 so it is dropping from 16.8 percentage to 10.5 percent so it is matching with option d so option d is the correct option question number eight a current ip flows through the primary coil of a transformer the graph of ip function of t as a function of time t is shown in the figure below so this is, this is the current waveform in the primary coil and we have to find out the uh, current in the secondary coil now uh, you must be knowing or you may not know that the current in the secondary coil i s is proportional to d i p by d t and uh, basically it's a negative sign appears there so we just we have to just take the derivative of this input signal to get the output with a negative sign so this is your input now 
from here to here this is a linear function so this basically y equal to mx so if you take derivative suppose y equal to a, uh, f of t or y equal to t okay so dy dt will becomes one means a constant so this function will be constant but a negative sign is there so negative constant with a negative sign so this portion for this portion we are getting this now for this portion you see that the uh, input is constant now if you take the derivative of a constant and it becomes zero so you are getting a zero here now for this portion negative slope okay and already a negative sign is there so it will basically be same like this but a negative sign is there that's why you will get a positive voltage here when it is matching with option c so option c is the correct option for this case question number nine one gram of salt is dissolved in water that is filled to a height of 5 cm in a beaker of diameter 10 cm the accuracy of length measurement is 0.01 cm while that of mass measurement is 0.01 mg when measuring the concentration c the fractional error delta c by c is so we know that c equals to mass by volume and volume is given by pi d by 2 whole square into h now these are the given data now fractional error equals to delta c by delta c by c equals to delta m by m whole square plus delta b by b whole square now we are know oh, sorry what delta m and what delta what m is but we don't know what delta b by b so first we have to calculate delta v so this is the way we calculate v because v is a function of d and h so sigma v square equal to sigma del v by del d whole square sigma d o square plus del v by del h square sigma h square here sigma v uh, is uh, equivalent to this delta v okay now we just took the derivative v is given by this and we take derivative with respect to d squaring it derivative with respect to h squaring it and we find that delta v square by v square equal to this and delta v by del v equals to uh, root over of this in the same way we got this here i have shown you explicitly how we are getting this type of thing but here i have not shown you so you can get it by similar treatment and what we do we just replacing the value of uh, delta d means uncertainty in length measurement and uncertainty in height measurement and we got this value now we just replacing delta v by v here and we get delta c by c equal to 0.282 percent and it is matching with option 4 so 4 is the correct option now finally question number 10 the inner shield of a triaxial conductor is driven by an ideal open follower circuit as shown the effective capacitance between the signal carrying conductor and the ground is so for this case the effective capacitance between signal carrying conductor and ground is basically made zero and either unaffected or made zero but it is it has been included for some purpose so it is to made to made zero is made zero so option four is the correct option and this is the end so i have tried my best to give you detailed solutions of each and every problem irrespective of this if you have any confusion query or question you can comment on below i will try my best to clarify them all so this is all for today guys if you are a new visitor of this channel please subscribe the channel and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and finally what i say thanks for watching